American Tackle is a company that more and more of us are starting to learn about and hear about in the fishing industry, and that's for good reason. And the odds are that most of you watching this will have used at least some components that they produce in your fishing setup because they do rod blanks, rod butts, reel seats, eyes, anything to do with the rod, you name it, and probably much, much more. Now, my knowledge of American Tackle is fairly limited, and that is one of the reasons that they've invited me out to Sweden. Yep, I'm going to Sweden tomorrow morning. So I'm very, very excited. Here is some of the kit that I'm taking with me. Most of it's going to be provided for me, but I've got my trusty rigs, because everyone likes to use their own rigs, or my terminal tackle, head torch, some PVA, my reels, which are my Fox EOS 12,000s, freshly spooled up with 15 pound outline camo from Avid, some shoes, and of course, all my camera kit and everything else. Now, the fishing may be pretty difficult because the conditions over there at the moment are over 30 degrees most days. So that could be a, a bit of a challenge, but I'm gonna take you along with me. We're all checked in already, going to the airport for about 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, so quite an early start. And I'm gonna take you along with me find out exactly what goes on over in Sweden when it comes to American Tackle, what they have to offer over there, learn a bit more about the company, and of course, just get to sample a brand new country for myself and hopefully catch my first ever, and probably last ever, Swedish carp. Hope you enjoy. Last time for us to be approximately 65 minutes with that time being trying to arrive on Barney Epstein. For now, please make yourself comfortable on board. We wish you a very pleasant flight. Well, we have arrived in Sweden, and I wouldn't be a Brit abroad without complaining about how hot it is. If it wasn't for the wind, I think I'd already be finding the shade. But uh, it's lovely to be here, fairly easy going, plain sailing, or plain flying, shall I say, other than the slightly long sprint from uh, passport control to Terminal 84 Amsterdam. So apologies if I sweated on anyone there. Uh, I would have rather not ran as well, but we are here. I'm just waiting for Gary to come around and pick me up, and I think we're gonna go grab a spot of lunch, and hopefully a nice cold beer, because I've been up for pushing 11 nearly 12 hours now and i am parched so a little update i have now with gary formal introductions in a bit but first get the important stuff done we've got some strong bows so i'm going to ignore that as if that doesn't exist because that's not a cider but i'm gonna have to try something swedish do you recommend this one give it a go medium dry and stoford that's a good shout then we'll go fishing or are we going swimming so what? It's not worth going fishing yet. I think we'll uh, go jump in the in the Baltic Sea for a bit, chill off, and then we'll go hit the lake later. Sweet. <laughs> Don't worry, this isn't taking a weird turn. <laughs> Car apology. <laughs> American tackle in Sweden. This is what we. This is the office. Yeah, as you can tell, this isn't a corporate type trip. It's very much a jolly, and uh, I think it's fair to say that Luke or Ian gets the next nice gig. But right now, I'm not feeling bad for you at all. I'm loving life. Well, you, you came during a heat wave, Joe, and yes. um, this was the only option. It's been over 30 degrees all week, and. Uh, there's no point in going down the lake. You'll see later, it doesn't get much wind, so this would be nightmare to be down. So we, we had to chill off. But to be honest, I think we should probably make a move soon and try and get the rods out. Mm -hmm. Those ciders should be chilled by now as well. That'd be very nice. Yeah, I look forward to that. <laughs> and before I soak this mic, I'm going to take it off and have another dunk.
What a stunning place, I'm sure you'll agree. Quite a trek to get down here. The uh, van was bouncing around all over the place, hitting rocks, divots and all sorts, going past an old burnt out vehicle on stands, like his wheels have been taken. So quite a trek to get down here, and then you come around the corner and you're greeted by this, just 20 acre slice of heaven. Surrounded by pine trees, lily pads all over the place, branches and trees sort of in the lake in places. It just looks completely untouched, other than the slightly carved out swims that are around the lake. And I've got a choice of two swim, well, I could go anywhere really, but obviously I'm going to be next to Gary. He's got, dropping into peg four, which is to my left. I could either go in this one, number five, or the other side of him in number three. I'm liking the look of this one. It's quite a lot of open water. The pads are dotted around all over the place. And the other one is just a bit further down, a bit more close range and still padded. But to be honest, I know it's an extremely cliche thing to say, but it doesn't matter whether I catch or not when you've got surroundings like this. It's not gonna get dark either. That's another bizarre thing of where we are geographically in the time of year, the sun barely sets, so it's not really gonna get dark. So that's gonna be a bit bizarre, but uh, the weather is meant to change and a fish has just swirled in the margin. Could be pike, I'm not sure if there's pike in it, but uh, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. I think we're just gonna get the base camp set up next door, put the barbecue on, have a drink and a bit of a chill. I know today looks like it's been a bit of a jolly, but. As Gary said, it's, it was just going to be pointless trying to fish in that heat. And with the weather changing tonight, hopefully we'll get some uh, action throughout the night. And then tomorrow, catch up properly with Gary. I'll properly introduce, introduce him rather than while swimming or at the uh, liquor store. And we'll talk a bit more about American tackle. And hopefully we'll both have a grin on our face because we've uh, had a fish. But yeah, time to get the gear in and swim. feeling a lot more refreshed this morning and uh, unfortunately no fish during the night but I'm not overly surprised things just weren't really going my way last night I was uh, so tired and just sort of knackered from the long day that getting the rods out just didn't go very smoothly for me so I wasn't overly confident anyway but unfortunately nothing for Gary either I think a chap further down the bank had a few last night so there were fish coming out but uh, today is meant to be not as hot as yesterday having said that it's probably already low 20s um, but it is going to be a bit more overcast, so I'm not exactly sure of the plan of attack for today. But uh, just to talk you through the set I have been using, how I did approach it last night. I'm using the Atrex 10 footers that uh, Gary's provided for me from American Tackle, of course. Now, back home, I predominantly use my 9 foot scopes a lot of the time. And if I go into bigger waters, I use my 12 foot. So I'm used to using shorter rods, so I opted for these. He did offer me 12s as well, but these were plenty uh, beefy enough for what I was doing. I was fishing probably between 60 to 80 yards last night out to an area which he said is a good spot. But um, yeah, did everything I needed them to and uh, quite a nice sort of softish tip. So it's not all broomstick action. It's quite a nice uh, progressive power output and especially down into the button so giving it a bit of a whack they were going out I'm gonna get bitten again by uh, some of these bugs I was did have one bite last night actually it was from a tick right in the side of my neck mozzies everywhere and just all sorts of bugs some of the bugs I've never seen before so uh, I'm sure I'm gonna go home with a few itchy spots and bites especially from him as well but uh, all part of the fun of visiting the new country and uh, 
being clearly a fresh, tasty skin for them. Anyway, I'm gonna head over down to uh, Gary's swim. I think he's gonna put on some breakfast, have a cup of tea, reassess the day and uh, see exactly what we're gonna to do today and, and actually properly introduce you to him. Because yes, it was such a full on day. I feel like I've shown him a few times in, uh, like I said, the liquor shop and then um, going swimming and things. We haven't actually sort of sat down and had a chat yet. So we're gonna do that as well. Leave these out, of course, might have a morning bite, but um, we'll see what the day brings. finally got you sat down in front of the camera which is probably more my fault than anything and yes it was a manic old day finally got a bit of uh, downtime to talk about exactly why i'm over here who you are and everything but also the fishing just didn't go to plan last night did it yesterday didn't go to plan yesterday but this whole trip hasn't gone to plan <laughs> i mean for two years we've been trying to get you over here mm -hmm. um hasn't really happened but finally you managed to catch your flights although it's a bit tight at one point mm -hmm. i heard yes <sighs> it's, it's been one of those hasn't it but it's uh it's been a bit doom and gloom prior to this trip, mid 30 degree temperatures, fish have spawned twice in the lake. When you arrived yesterday, I was even traffic jam getting up to the airport. So yeah, we got a late start. That's why we went swimming, mm -hmm. chill off a little bit, you know, let's take it easy. Got down to the lake yesterday evening and um, the weatherman gave us a little bit of hope with it gonna be in a, you know, a, a cold front coming in, a little bit cooler warm weather and a bit of a storm was meant to come in yesterday with yeah. a lot of wind and rain, but unfortunately everything but the wind arrived and I preempted that heavy wind shooting down here um, and knowing the fish do like to move on a fresh wind in this lake and the wind didn't come. So, so we're blaming the weatherman. Risk. We're blaming the weatherman. It's always the weatherman's fault, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Now, I'm just going to keep getting sidetracked with the fishing, so I've got to make sure the properly introduce you. So, the basics. Who are you? How come you're over here in Sweden and why have you invited me over here? Yeah, so uh, I'm Gary Benny, uh, European Operations Manager for American Tackle, a US-based company, and our European office is in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm the manager there. Um, and obviously, I wanted to invite you to come over and get to know a little bit more about American Tackle. Um, which we'll get into in a bit. I'm also keep looking at the lake. <laughs> Don't um, be sidetracked by the, just trying to get a fish on the bank here. Yeah. yeah, so I, I wanted to give you the chance to come over and meet me. How, how did I end up in Sweden? Um, Johanna is Swedish, my, my partner. And uh, yeah, so I moved over here about 13 years ago and set up my, my new life in Sweden. Um, Lovely. And ended up working for an American company, an English guy from Somerset, you know, living in Sweden, working for an American company. So. <laughs> it's quite a little mix up there. Mm. So, uh, we will talk a bit more, but I think we're both itching to get a fish on the bank as well. Yeah, after last night, I think we need to we need to look at the moves. We need to look at what we're going to do. This lake is really good for stalking. And I think what we should do now is we should wind in, uh, just put on a little bit of light gear with us, walk around with a bucket of bait, prime a few spots on the far edge. And it's still got this nice low cloud cover. So I think we've got a really good chance of a bite. Um, and then when we're sat on the unhooking mats, just waiting for a bite, I think we can, uh, you can ask me as many questions as you want, right? Sounds like a plan. Let's get to it. My incompetence continues because I didn't bring my own looking back, so I'm gonna. I mean, I choose to sit on the floor, be nice and natural. <laughs> so if I was a real good guest, I'd give you the unlucky mat, wouldn't I? <laughs> well, uh, we found a couple of fish, haven't we, walking up and down this bank? Mm. But not as many as we'd like, but give yeah. it a try. Small group of fish, like a few small pods and the odd single fish moving around. Like, normally you find a decent sized group and that gives you an idea where you want to be, but I don't think we're doing anything wrong. We've chucked a few a few likely looking spots, put a few handfuls of bait down. And um, here we see a few fish and um, managed to drop two baits into likely looking areas. And I keep, there's another one sort of yeah. moving through the lilies now. So um, they are moving around this area. At least we're fishing where they are, you know what I mean? But while we're sat here, hoping that one of them's going to go off, we discussed earlier that American Tackle isn't really a brand that you're going to see when you walk into a tackle shop next to the quarter stand or the fox stand or whatever. So to the average consumer, we're not bombarded with the logos and the branding of America Tech, so we probably think it's not really involved in carp landing as much as it is. Yeah. But I now know, and of course you, you know more than me, that it is heavily involved, and probably most of us are using some form or some component from American Tackle. So yeah, absolutely. I guess what I'm trying to say is how are you 
so integral and so involved in the carp angling world, but not really known by most of us. Yeah, I mean, so I guess that's the whole reason you're here, isn't it? I mean, you know, because we want to sort of disclose who we are and what we do um, and just why the American tackle company is interested in carp fishing. Um, and I think that you're correct in your assumption that, you know, you walk into a tackle shop and you're not going to see um, finished American tackle product to buy, you know, that you'll go out and fish with American mm -hmm. tackle this or whatever. Because we make the parts to make the finished product. So other people will use our componentry, guides, seats, blanks and stuff, and make their product. That said, we do have like Atrex blanks and you can use everything from American Tackle as like a custom rod builder to make that rod. So you could effectively say it's an American Tackle product, but it's not available like in the shop or something. It's yeah. got to be custom made to order. So you're right in that, that way. Um, but we have been around a very, very long time. Um, you know, uh, I guess the, the name American Tackle Company is, is misleading because it should be like worldwide tackle company. Uh, we are global. We have offices all around the world. Um, and we have pro staffers, thousands of them around the world, helping us to develop product, um, which is why we're one of the sort of prominent and leading component companies in the world. Um, and because of that fact, chances are you've already used our products without knowing it. Yeah, uh, especially when you were saying about the branding is that a lot of rod companies will put obviously their own logos on things because they're their rods. But if you strip all that back, it is your components that are underneath. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that that's, it's not, it's not, that there has been a change in the company with regards to like, you know, for the, the time I've worked for the company, I have wanted to push forward. Um, sorry, just a couple more bubbles just came up in yeah, your spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've wanted to push forward the brand to be more prominent and well known to the carp angler mm -hmm. so that when they walk into the shop and they're buying a new rod or something, they can see that mark of quality, AT product and know, okay, yeah, I know that brand, yeah. you know, um, it's good guides, good seats, you know, all that sort of stuff. And um, so now today, quite proudly, you know, all the leading manufacturers in Europe, not just the UK, but in the UK especially, um, are using American Tackle. I would yeah. say pretty much all of them. Um, if they're not, they will be. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite good. Um, so more and more people will know about American Tackle now. And I know that it's, if you look at the custom rod building market in the UK, which is very prominent, um, you'll notice they're using a lot of American Tackle product. Mm -hmm. uh, not just because we're making it available, it's because they want to use it, they yeah. choose what to use. Yeah. Now, if you can ask me one last question, just I just thought about this while we were sat here, why is your spot getting more bubbles than mine? Because I'm fishing it. Right. <laughs> no, I, I have no idea. Question. <laughs> But no, tomorrow actually you'll um, you know we'll, we'll pop to the office. Um, you'll see the the European branch that, that I'm running. Um, you'll see the R and D room. Um, I think that's quite important to understand that you know we have a lot of um, you know brands will come over and they'll go to the R and D room and, and research and development. So we'll work on their products. We'll we'll do CAD designs of new ideas. You don't just have to take the products we've already developed. We actually work as a partner. We don't really we don't class it as a customer. They're more of a partner. Mm -hmm. We work with them to develop their own niche ideas and products. That could be using our components in a different way, um, new designs of rods, or we might even make new actions and powers of blanks. Um, or sometimes it might be to the point of we're actually developing new componentry specific for that brand. So it's quite interesting, it's a cool job. Um, maybe not so interesting for the average <laughs> angler who can't just go in and buy that product. But I think what the most important thing to realize is that you know, American Tackle, we are, I think one of the only component companies in the world who have developed product specifically for carp angling. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean that we didn't just take a set of guides that we already had and make them bigger, right? Because there's limitations with that. The guides might be too heavy. They might be too bulky. You know, they're not really ideal for the, the actions and powers of the blanks, maybe the line, the real size. We've taken all of those characteristics, uh, you know, to a point and processed it you see that fish there? Just go through the release. Let's go back. A bit further back. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. We've taken all those <laughs> points and processed it to create a set of, what I'm coming to is a set of guides, like the Thai Forged Airs, um, that are designed for carp angling. And no one's ever done that before. Mm -hmm. It's always been something that's readily available before and just sort of adapted. So it's never perfect. It works okay. It works just fine. But we wanted to make it not just fine. We yeah. wanted to make it perfect. So, so that's what's, what American Tackle's about, really. Um, of course, 
we do everything, you know, spinning rods and C rods and fly rods and all the components that go with it and everything. Um, but as I'm running the European branch, it was very key for me to make sure that uh, carp was on the agenda as well. Definitely. Well, we're starting to pack down everything. We tried for several hours on the other bank, looking for fish. They just weren't really having it. And we tried in that one spot specifically, and then walked up and down the bank. It just it wasn't really the one, but we have seen a fair few fish down that end of the lake. Oh, that was a big old bug. He can get off me. We have seen a lot more fish down that end. We've walked all the way back up to the other end, walked around. We've not had a rod in the water for the last couple of hours, just looking for where to be. And it's clear the fish are down that end. So quick pack up. I did like this swim though, beautiful swim, but just as pretty down the other end. And we're going to fish in pegs 9 and 10, I believe. So uh, yeah, quickly get all the rods packed down, pack down the shelter and everything, get our stuff down there, get the rods out for the night, and hopefully we can salvage a bite this evening into tomorrow morning. And it's starting to rain, perfect timing. So uh, we timed that perfectly with a nice Rainstorm, didn't we? Oh, packing packing down. up in the rain is just what you need. But actually, it was like a bit of a fresh shower for us. It's been so yeah, hot. Oh, watch your feet here. So this is peg nine. This is one I'm going to be jumping into. Yeah, this is a nice swim. We we came down earlier stalking on the far side and just saw so many fish moving in this area. It just seems like it has to be the one, really. I mean, I think we probably counted well over 20 shows and like groups of fish swimming through and stuff. So it makes no sense to stay, you know, down the other end of the lake where there's basically nothing showing but one more night maybe two we could squeeze one in before we got a fly on but um there's i've seen another one just roll now so we know we're going to be fishing on fish and that's half the battle in it so um yeah joe's going to pop in here i'm going to pop in the next one he's got the plum swim so if he doesn't catch you know <laughs> <laughs> lovely right rattle the rods out chill out again yeah mate let's do it now for the second two rods, I'm fishing slightly differently to how I have been. I have been fishing on the deck with, um, well, wafters, but my standard go-to bottom bait rig. Because the bottom is so silty and there's not really any kind of gravelly patches that I can find anyway in my short space of time, I've now gone over to Ronnie rigs, which I don't often use, but on a really supple braided boom. So rather than it sticking out quite rigid from the lead, I'm hoping that if the lead plugs, plugs into the bottom, which I'm likely going to, that boom should still be supple enough to stay above all of that. And then because I've got a little bag of another pop-up on, it should hold it above the um, the lake bed. Once that PVA dissolves, that'll pop to the top, show me exactly where my rig is so I can bait up or more likely to get Gary to bait up for me with a throwing stick because I'm useless with a throwing stick. And that should settle down nicely, critically balanced pop-up just sitting above the, uh, the lake bed. So that's a plan of attack for these two rods. So this one is going to go down. There's a nice channel through the pads so I can get should be able to get a good line lay. I should be able to get quite a bit of distance. The reason we're going long is because we've seen a lot of fish out quite long. Perfect right between the clearing. Get that line lay. Coming to land of fish is another <laughs> kettle of fish, but I feel a lot better about line laying how that's gone out. So hopefully that pop-up will pop up in a second. And it's popped up. Perfect, so I'm now gonna get Gary, my helpful assistant, <laughs> to bait up for me with the throwing stick. How much time out? I don't know that she thinks it's gonna be good just for a bite, really. Just a nice scattering. There we are, the line sunk perfectly. Good line lay. I know that rig's presented. The next challenge is actually landing a fish if I get one, because it is quite a distance through a lot of pads. This one's same again. I want just in front of those pads, this side of them, so nice and easy to cast to and bait up to. Hit the bottom, I actually felt a bit of a drop there. Give it a second, and there we are, the pop-up's already come up. That's done exactly what I wanted it to. 
and I know that those two rigs on the Ronnies are presented nicely. are out with my swim everyone saw where i've put my what exactly you've done in your swim similar really you know moved up to this top end and i've just uh, flipped three rods out in sort of holes into the weed stroked lilies where i know there's a bit of a firmer bottom where i can present a, a bait really mm -hmm. um there's enough fish showing so i think that's all, all we can really do and less bait less bite just enough for a bite um locked up strong thick line and it's hit and hold mm -hmm. uh, yeah but I, again nice. seeing fish so it's always a chance now i know that we're going to the warehouse slash office slash whatever is there tomorrow in uh, Stockholm. So hopefully we'll have a look through some of the components that you do. And if you have a look at them, you'll probably think, hang on, that looks quite a lot like the eyes of my rod or the real seat on my rod. I'm so. sure we'll go for a lot. Yeah, we're going to go look at the research and development department, you know, where we do a lot of the uh, sort of like design of products. We actually, I'm a rod builder myself, so we actually build in-house a lot of samples <laughs> where we test the stuff. All American tackle employees are rod builders and tackle designers. Um, and so that's, uh, yeah, the, globally we have a lot of experience to, to provide sort of like carp or fly or salt or you know, anything mm -hmm. like that, different genre specific components, um, which is why we're one of the leading component companies in the world. Nice, yeah. well, I'm looking forward to seeing it tomorrow. I'm also looking forward to barbecue again tonight and a cider and hopefully a fish. I think really we've got, got a really fish. good chance for a fish tonight. I know I have anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need for that. Yeah, 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 that's a bite. That was a bit of a wake up call for my little social. Yeah, mate. Oh, oh I thought I lost it there. She's coming, he's coming slowly. So much weed out there. It's coming through slowly now. Let's get that net, mate. No! Oh, oh I thought I lost it. Get me net. Oh, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> They fight so hard in the shallow water. We did say it was going to happen, didn't we? But uh, fishing locked up and uh, got there and the rod was absolutely bending over. It was powering through all the lilies out there. <sighs> Heart was in my mouth for half that. I thought I lost it like three times. Lines pinging off the lilies and pinging off his dorsal. But we got it in the net. So, yeah, cheers. Let's uh, get ourselves together. We'll have a little look, will we? Well, this is the fish that disturbed our little evening social. We've been hearing fish bosh out there and uh, really happy to get one in the net. It's not the biggest, of course, about 15 pound, but uh, yeah, a good example of a Swedish scaly forest lake mirror. And uh, hopefully it won't be the only one we're gonna get tonight. Like I said, there is a few fish moving. We've seen plenty of fish and that move obviously paid off because we managed to finally get one. But uh, it's all about getting Joe a fish now. So uh, slip this one back, get the rod sorted and Hopefully next time you see a fish in front of the camera, Joe will be holding it.
unfortunately it was a rather quiet and uneventful night after Gary had his fish fairly early into darkness last night so we were feeling confident going into the night but it just wasn't to be a few fish still milling about but uh, not a lot happened just had a cup of tea and some breakfast and unfortunately it's time to bring the rods back in I'm gonna say it again though with a location like this catching would have been a bonus but you all know really I loved I would have loved to have caught a Swedish carp who knows, there may be one more opportunity on the road or something, but yeah, they just weren't to be. I saw some fish bubbling this morning, just out here, where I got my rig down here, so I don't think I was a million miles away at times. But uh, our deadline to get out of here and head to the office is looming, so it is time to bring them in. I'll see you at the office. So we packed up from the lake this morning after that one fish last night, quick freshen up, and now I'm gonna give you a little whistle stop tour and Joe, of course, behind the camera, and you're gonna to get to see American Tackle European Branch here in Stockholm, Sweden. So let's take a look around and show you a few of the highlights of just what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So first up, you join me in our little showroom. The good thing about rod building components is they don't take up a lot of space. So here we get to display a good selection of what American Tackle European specific components for rod productions, rod builds and future designs. Gives people the chance to come, see, feel exactly what we can offer for the next rod build. So of course we do also have a lot of finished rods for examples of different you know, actions, powers and species specific uh, applications. So we have different rods available for people to check out, even try and feel. Um, these can range from microwave guides, tie forged air guides, pike rods, perch rods, zander rods, saltwater rods, everything you can think of. And then we have of course our American Tackle specific pro staff merchandise which is for our promotion of our pro staffers and we make some products you know, merchandise, hoodies, hats and things. Um, really nice for our pro staff to take out and get on the water. So that you could call the boring side where we're sat doing our day-to-day, -day, sat on the computer and everything. But this side, I like more. This is the workshop, the research and development department. It's where we're going to be putting things together. We're going to make things here, but we're going to be testing it. We're going to be developing it. That could be from blanks, components, seats, guides, etc., and also building customer sample rods. So we're going to take a quick whirlwind tour and you see a few different stages and just what we do. So first up, we're gonna start on the rod building bench. Here at American Tackle, all employees are professional rod builders, tackle designers, and rod designers. Uh, so we always come onto the bench where we're gonna start looking at blanks, we're gonna start putting on guides, doing rod designs. After we've sketched it on the computer, we're gonna put it onto here and start maybe wrapping it up and seeing how it looks. All blanks have a different action and power, and guide placement is specific to the action and power. We use this deflection board to test each blank to work out exactly where the guides need to be and what size guides work best for each blank before we make the rod. Of course, we have thousands of different components, and all these bins you see behind me are just a few selections from different reel seats, trim, checks, EVA grips, all pre-shaped, etc., so we can start building the rods. If we don't have something that's perfect, though, we have to make it. So that's what we're going to look at now. So the lathe. This is where we do a lot of the EVA cork and grip shaping. So all those CAD designs and everything, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at them, we're going to start making some prototype samples, send off to our factory, we're actually going to mass produce them. So this thing is used a hell of a lot. Then the final stage of any rod build is to finish them up and get them ready for the person to go out and fish and test them. So I'm going to put some epoxy on and that's how we build a rod. So there you have it, a whistle stop tour of what we do here on a daily basis at American Tackle Europe. Of course, we can't go into all the details we'd love to show you, but it gives you an idea of us as a brand. And next time you go into that tackle shop and you're looking for a new set of rods, you'll see that 80 hang tag on the guide or maybe our logo on a real seat and you'll be more familiar with the brand as a whole. Joe's very keen to get some food now, so let's go try some Swedish cuisine. We're all hungry. And also, I'm keen to get the rods out tonight, but Joe's a little bit tired, so I don't know if that's actually gonna happen, but tomorrow we've got to be up early to get to the airport, so we'll see what happens. Next up, some grub. It was at this point that my phone buzzed to say that both of our flights back to the UK had been canceled. So we did what any sensible angler would do and went fishing. Well, 
After catching what I'm pretty sure was a personal best perch, the rest of that little jigging session became pretty difficult, much like the rest of the trip over in Sweden. But uh, nevertheless, we had fun doing so, walking around this huge marine, I think it's the largest in Sweden, just water everywhere, as you can see from the drone shots. Stunning place and a lovely venue to catch some perch. I'm sure if I was able to go back, I'd do a lot more there because I think we caught some fairly small perch actually for that area. But anyway, we had to bring the rods in and we went for a lovely meal with uh, Gary, his wife Johanna, and one of his kids, and uh, we had some beautiful food and steak. I was going to go for something traditional Swedish, but steak and chips, you can't go wrong, and a lovely creme brulee as well. So the food was lovely, rounded off the evening beautifully. Unfortunately, things went a little bit downhill after that, because as I said, our flights had been cancelled a few hours earlier, and when we briefly checked, there were stacks of alternative options to get us home, so no worries. In the time it took us to fish and have some food, Pretty much all of those flights had been booked up, probably by other people trying to get home as well. There were no flights at all going back from Stockholm to Bristol, unless we wanted to go to sort of Croatia, 15 hour layover, then come back. It was just ridiculous. So uh, a little pop to the local off license, got a few more beers, come back to uh, drown our sorrows. And miraculously, three seats came up from a flight direct from Stockholm back to Heathrow. So we booked that up. My wife picked us up from London rather than Bristol Airport, which is a bit more of a trek, but we were on English soil. Gary then went to Horseshoe, met up with uh, Cotswold Rods and did a little um, show there at Horseshoe with American Tackle and everything. So something trade related, not entirely sure of exactly what went on there, but uh, very similarly to what I saw over in Sweden, I think they were displaying to different companies and things in the UK. I then managed to get home. I'm about to go fishing again, actually, because uh, I need to redeem myself after not catching anything from Sweden. But I hope you enjoyed this trip. I had an absolute blast visiting another country. It was amazing to see. I'm just about recovered about a week later from all the mozzie bites and ant bites. My skin has stopped itching. That was the only uh, downside and the heat. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go fishing and hopefully catch something. I'll probably be looking at my rods and thinking, is that American Tackle eyes? Or is that American Tackle real seats and things? And I'm pretty sure they are on some of my rods. So I hope you've learned a bit more about American Tackle and sort of understand a bit more what goes into the rod building world, especially when it comes to companies putting out these rods, how much goes in behind closed doors, all the different um, R&D, like I think, I think what uh, Guy was saying about the research and development that goes into building these rods. They're not just slapped together from different components off of uh, sort of a, a shelf online shelf list that you can just choose yeah those eyes that blank and go i'm sure some companies do but a lot more goes into it now than what we probably used to so i hope that's opened some of your eyes if you do want to know a few more things about american tackle then let us know in the comment section below please say you want to learn more because that probably means i get to go on more trips back to sweden maybe america do all sorts of different things with american tackle so if you enjoyed this please let us know in the comment section below because i'd love to do some more with them but that's it for me for now i'm about to go fishing and hopefully catch something from my syndicate because I certainly didn't catch anything from Sweden but I'll be back. Mm -hmm.